Hey world, my name is Noah, and I'm a Frenchie that is 13 year old. I've been living in China for almost 13 years now, and I am a part of the micro campus program in Xijiu. I started to hear about the micro campus program in 6th grade, however I didn't know much about it. In 7th grade we started to have meetings, and that's when I started to learn all about the program. So, what is it? Well, micro campus is a program hosted by the Shanghai American School. A group of 8th grade students leave to Yunnan Shizhou for 28 days. During the process, they learn about the culture of Shizhou while also working on their inquiry project. So, why did I go? Well, as I mentioned earlier, this program allows students to interact with the village while being independent and working on a project, and I wanted to do all those things. The Inquiry Project is a project selected by students at Microcampus to work on for one month. I chose to work on green energy, but when I had my walk and talk with Mr. T, I then decided to narrow down my topic to saving energy in Shizhou. So in order to investigate green energy in Shizhou, one must consider the past, present, and future. While working, I interviewed many different people to see different people's opinions about green energy. Also, I decided to look at the past, mostly, and what the future could look like here in Shizhou. So let's start with the past. The walls and roofs of traditional architecture do not let cold come in. The roofs are usually just above the windows, allowing sunlight to come in, but block out the intensity of the sun during the summer. Back then, all this was just designed for a more comfortable life. However, nowadays, people are saving money from this, as they do not have to use aircon over the summer, and they do not have to use heating over the winter. Now, heating. So, back then, there wasn't any electricity, as it was introduced lately, which I will mention later. They used coal and wood, which are very good combustibles, to heat their water and take showers. So, electricity. So, there was a lack of electricity, as it was only introduced in the late 1970s. So, now we'll move on to the present. Heating water in Shizhou is usually powered by solar energy nowadays. Electric water heating is only used on relics such as the linen center because they are protected at a governmental level. In case of that, they are forced to use hot water pumps powered by electricity. In recent houses, people also have to use electric heaters during the winter, causing their bills to increase. <coughs> so, renewable energy. Well, now in Shijou, they have the street lamps. These street lamps are powered by wind turbines and solar energy. The wind turbines act during the day, and so do the solar panels. However, the wind turbines store energy in a battery that is used overnight when, when the solar panels are rendered useless. Next, we have wind turbines. These wind turbines are located at the north of Lake Arhai. The wind turbines produce electricity for villages and even the small cities around Chijo and the solar panels. This is how almost every family heats this is how almost every family heats their water here in Shizhou. I will mention how they work later on. Now, let's move on to present architecture. The walls and roofs of present architectures are made of cheap concrete that allows air to come in, causing it to be very cold over the winter, which is why families have to use heaters that cause their bills to increase. The roofs Nowadays, we're also not as close to the windows, causing us to be very warm over the summer because of the intensity of the sun. So, heating and cooling. Well, now in present houses, people are starting to use heating over the summer and cooling over the winter. So, the bills increase and the energy starts to be used in big quantities. So, let's move on to the future now. Renewable energy in the future. Well, I believe that renewable energy in the future mostly depend on the sun. Silicon solar panels, will, which I will get into depth later, produce electricity, so not only hot water. Also, I believe the wind could also be used here because of the high altitude and causing that wind to be very strong up in the mountains, making it a perfect environment for wind turbines. Next, growth. Population growth. Well, obviously, the cities are starting to grow. In the future, this village might even be a city, not a small village of Shizhou with traditional houses. Most likely, all these traditional houses will be wrecked to the ground and replaced with cheap, new, old, ugly, and not energy-efficient houses. Now that I have showed you what has been built in Shizhou and what could be built, so how do they work? 
Here's a simple model for the solar heating systems in Shijo that Shijo is using right now. In a separate tank, there is cold water that is stored and connected to the solar machine with pipes. The cold water arrives in this big red tank where it then flows into the pipes and fills the pipes up. Copper is used in the pipes and the exchanger between the tank. The hot water then naturally flows into the tank through thermal siphon flow where it is allowed the rest of cold water to flow down the tubes. They are heated up during the day because of the sun here in the pipes. Warm water is then stored here and then sent to another warm water tank where it can be stored for later use. So now let's move on to the future of solar panels in Chicho. I believe that Chijo will continue to use their strong sun to produce electricity, which is why they would use a silicon solar panel. These produce electricity from the energy of the sun. The main composer is silicon. When the sun's photons hit the solar cell, the silicon atom transfers their energy into loose atoms. Then, once the photons smash into the silicon atoms, it causes them to drive in one in an orderly way, causing current, which is what activates electricity and everything else in people's houses. These solar panels can be used even on cloudy days as they only rely, rely on small light from the sun. So I believe that the future of green energy in Shijo and all around here relies on the sun and the wind. And I learned all of this in 28 days. I'd like to thank all the people that helped me with this. Mr. T, Ms. Mai, and everyone at the Linden Center and all the staff at Young Jura. Also, this all was possible because of the friendliness of everyone in the village. They hosted us like we were part of the village. Also, I'd like to end with one quote that Mr. T gave us at about the middle of the trip. This is a quote that Mr. T gave us at about the middle of the trip. And it was when we were starting to really feel the pressure of work here at Microcampus. But this was what it all led to. So that this big project was only accompli accomplished by the perfection of all the minor interviews I had that led to this